Hello, somebody. Yes. You and I will face some odds, some challenges, as we seek to rebuild what it is we want to build up in 2011. But the test question, the test question is this. Test question. Will the odds beat you? Or will you beat the odds? Which one would it be? Oh, I can't hear you, church. Which one would it be? L let me quickly share with you three steps. S three steps that Shamga took in beating the odds against him. And these three steps would do you in good stead <laughs> as you seek to beat your own odds in 2011. Are you ready to receive? Yes. Step one. Start from where you are. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I know, I know, I know. It's not profound. It's not profound. It's not deep. But you will know that this is the first step you need to take if you're going to beat your heart. Start from where you are. Where was Shamga? What was the starting point for this man? What was the starting point for him? I'm glad you asked. Shamga was a farmer. A farmer. Keep that at the back of your mind. I'm going somewhere. You say, Pastor, how did you know he was a farmer from this text? The verse didn't even tell us that. The reason I know Shamga was a farmer is because Judges chapter 3 verse 31 says he has an horse god. Do you know what an horse god is? Oh, uh, oh, excuse me, forget, forgive me. I forget I'm talking to a bunch of city slickers. I, I'm not talking to village people. An horse god is a tool is a tool farmers use to poke an oxen to make them pull the plow. If they refuse to go, they will poke them with an horse gourd to get them going. And, and at one hand is a sharp point to poke. At the other end is a flat, flat surface to help the farmer to dig down the crops, to go down to dip the ground for the crops. That's an horse gourd. So, I told you to keep that in mind that he's a farmer. Why is it important that you know that Shamga was a farmer? I'll tell you why. Because the first words, the first words in chapter 3 verse 31 says, look at it. The first word, what does the first phrase say? And after him, after him came, that's a repeated phrase in the book of Judges. When it says, after him, the writer is listing all the judges in the book, all the leaders of Israel. So that little introduction, after him, means Shamga is now a judge. But he didn't start as a judge. He started as a farmer. He started on the farm. He didn't start, he didn't start in the White House. <laughs> he started on the street of Chicago. I'm preaching for Obama, no, no. <laughs> I don't know, that's not even in my note. I don't know where that came from. Watch this, watch this. This is what I want you to see. And he, he didn't wait for a perfect condition. Or for stuff to get better 
before he got going. No, no, no. He started where he was. He didn't do a lot of things that folks do to keep the odds against them. Shamgar didn't procrastinate. As Ecclesia says, chapter 11, verse 4 says, He who watches the wind will not sow. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap. I, I, even, like, I even like what verse 6 says better. Verse 6 says, listen to it. Sow your seed in the morning. <laughs> and do not be idle in the evening. For you do not know whether morning <laughs> or evening sowing will succeed you don't know which one God is going to use do it in the morning when you can do it in the evening when you can or whether both of them alike will be good good Lord in other words the word of the Lord says to tell you start from where you are and keep sowing Tell the person next to you, keep sowing. The sign, put the sign up. Now, you, you all know when you are in the when you are in the, in the mall, when you're in the mall, and you're lost, and, and, and you, you're looking for a store, and, and, and you don't know where that store is, you go into the information information section. And and most ma malls have this map, okay, where you could go, and, and they will tell you, when you go there, they'll tell you you are uh -huh. good good you're here now now i think in 2011 we all need to go out and make a sign that will say you are here put it in your office <laughs> not that you have senior moments or you're you're forgetful of where you are put it in your office put it in your kitchen put it on your fridge something to remind you where you are because you see when you go to that map in the mall is saying to you you're here it doesn't mean you're going to stay there it's showing you that you're here and you got some place you're going oh. and you got some place you're going watch this Shamga did not wait until he had an army of thousands to go against the Philistines and you don't have to wait until things get better before you serve the Lord. You don't have to wait till things get better in your life before you come up and say, Pastor, what can I do in the house of God to serve him? You don't have to wait till things start getting better before you even start rebuilding whatever you want to rebuild in 2011. No, no. What you got to do for God, do it now. Everybody say now. The moment is now. My brothers and my sisters, now is the time. Whatever you're going to do for God, you must do it right now. Because now is all you got. Yesterday is gone. No one in here would ever see yesterday again. Tomorrow is not here. Right, Gary? You know better. God saved him from a major accident this year. But you've got right now. Everybody say now. Jesus says to his disciples in John chapter 4, verse, verse 35, Say not ye, they are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already for harvest. What is the Lord saying? He's saying, folks who always put their blessing ahead of them, never reach the thing they are trying to reach 
Because for procrastinators, for procrastinators, it's always someday when. You know how people would, you know how people would say, Pastor, oh my pastor, if I had a million dollars, I would tithe a tenth to the church. I will give the church a thousand dollars and they want my head to swell right no. yeah right see it's not really what you will do with a million if you have it it's not what you will do with a million that God is concerned about no the question is what you're gonna do with the dollar 50 that you have oh come on now you're not talking back to me now all of a sudden you got quiet in here see a lot of folks like to live in yesterday <laughs> whenever I travel back to Nigeria I can bank on running into one of my homies that we grew up together as a matter of fact, one of them called me this morning at 6 o'clock. I, I can bank on seeing one of my homies that I grew up with still hanging out. Still hanging out in the same hood. In the same spot. And, 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 and still dreaming the same dream. You know, they say, one day, I'm going to make it big, man. One day, it's going to hit the jackpot, man. One day, it's going to graduate from high school. <laughs> Ever know folks, them folks like that? They're always talking in the one day when, and one day never comes. You see, it's bad enough to allow your odds to beat you up. But to be satisfied to remain beat up is even worse. Who am I firing up in this place this morning? Because to convince yourself that you can't do anything to turn your situation around is a supreme travesty. Oh, is a supreme travesty on what God wants to do in your life in 2011. Oh, somebody just got delivered right there. <laughs> if that's you, give the Lord a mighty praise. <coughs> give him a praise. The story is told. The story is told of an eagle. An eagle. A mother eagle who accidentally laid a egg in a chicken coop and when the time came the eaglet was arched among the family of chickens <coughs> his fellow chicken his fellow chickens stepbrothers and stepsisters I don't know what to call them. 